I uh, I don't have an intro for this video, so here's a dancing ogre instead. This week's challenge in King's Fall is the Gaze Amaze Challenge, and let me tell you, my gaze was not amazed. <laughs> this challenge is in the Golgroth encounter in King's Fall, and let me tell you, it is certainly a challenge in Destiny 2 the video game. This is quite possibly the most uncreative and boring challenge I have ever experienced in Destiny, period. It is so ridiculously... <sighs> Sorry, sorry, I dozed off there for a second. Um, yeah, this challenge sucks. So the difference between normal and doing this challenge is that instead of saying 3, 2, 1, go ahead and take it. Instead, you're going to say 5, 4, I'm in the pool, go ahead, take it, go. That That's it. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? Yeah, that, that's, that's really it. So th this challenge requires you to be in the DPS pool when your gaze is running out so that Golgoroth can swap gazes to a different person while you're in the DPS pool. This provides nothing except you risking your life when swapping the gaze. That's the challenge, essentially. So, it's fairly straight to the point. The only thing that you need to worry about in this encounter is pretty much not dying to the adds between the Golgoroth damage phases or the Thrall in the pool. The challenge, as I mentioned, is you have two gaze holders and you're literally in control of the driver's seat the entire time. The entire challenge is dependent on you two, and whatever the rest of your teammates do does not matter a damn. All you need to do is ping pong the uh, gaze back and forth. You don't even need to actually complete the gazes back and forth. You could fail capturing the gaze and still not fail the challenge. But ideally, you want to ping pong back and forth on all six orbs, and the only requirement is that when your partner is taking the gaze, you have to be in the DPS pool when they take it, or at least be standing in it before you die, and then you'll be fine. They can take the gaze, and you can complete the process just like that over and over. So again, you can just fail to capture it if you think that you're going to die and you're not in the pool, and simply continue the challenge from there and just revive your teammate. Keep going. Ideally, as far as gaze holding goes, you want to have your two anchor players be the gaze holders, or maybe your two highest light level players, whatever you want to go with. The reason for this is simple. You need somebody who's experienced in actually taking the gaze, somebody who knows how to do the countdown properly, somebody who knows where the DPS pools are, etc., etc. You're not going to want to just throw somebody who's never done gaze holding into the master challenge and expect them to get this perfectly. Also, light level would matter because Golgoroth will be shooting you nonstop with darts, obviously, especially in the pool when you're going in to swap gazes. He'll still be shooting Axiom darts at you on top of you having Thrall, maybe a Knight, maybe a Phalanx coming at you. So, if you're like 1585, you'll probably die in like, I don't know, one dart. But if you're like 1600, then you can eat a couple of darts, a couple of hits here, and that makes a big difference. So, have your two anchors be your gaze holders just to make things smoother for your DPSers. Let's talk about the actual loadout for gaze holders. So, my recommendation is going to be having just burst weapons. Either run three burst weapons, or if you'd like, run two burst weapons and something like a linear fusion to take Golgoroth's gaze just so you feel comfortable in taking it in exactly one shot. Some people like Arbalest, I personally go with a heavy linear like Cataclysmic for example which is going to be the, like the weapon of the fight because it's still a one shot just like Arbalest and in the other two slots I can run let's say two primaries that will have unlimited ammo for me to deal with the Axion darts and the other nonsense like that coming at me and then you still have a linear heavy slot. If you're running Arbalest, well I mean that's fine, but then your ammo might eventually run out. Now, speaking of ammo, I personally ran a Trace Rifle here because not only can a Trace have a ton of ammo, it can shoot darts down, it can shoot the DPS pools that are still up in the sky for your teammates for their next damage cycle going forward, so like from pool 1 to pool 2, for example. And on top of that, you want to have your entire team, or at least a majority of them, bring Aeons with you. You don't have to wear Aeons the entire time, by the way. As soon as the Barrier Knights in this encounter die, you can switch to whatever exotic you want. But to start the fight, there will be two Barrier Champions that you can kill to make ammo for your teammates going to, you know, Phase 2, Phase 3, etc. Also, a Yellow Bar Wizard in the back that can also be finished for Heavy Ammo. And I believe there's two Orange Bar Wizards that you can finish for Green Ammo. Why do I mention Green Ammo? Because, well, you're going to have a Divinity. You should absolutely have a Divinity. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Somebody in your Master Challenge Fire Team should run Divinity because it's stupid. It's a free buff. 
It's a giant crit for everybody to hit. There's no reason to not run it. Get somebody that's running Div. 100%. Also, quick shout out to Agri Scepter, literally bullying the Barrier Knights in this encounter to Oblivion. Now, for positioning and all that, I'm going to show both versions of this fight, meaning as a gaze holder and as somebody doing damage in the pools and what you should be doing in there. For a gaze holder, it's fairly simple. You're going to do the job that you would normally do, except for this particular challenge. You're going to be shooting the Axion darts with your ammo that I mentioned earlier, and then you're going to be counting down from 10. At least that's what I do, counting down from 10, instead of just being like 17, 16, 15. I just say 10 and then count down from there. Then once I start getting to about 5, that gives my teammate the signal to start getting ready to actually shoot Gogoroth's back. So I'll be like, 5, 4, 3, I'm in the pool, go ahead and shoot. And then they'll take the gaze with a couple of seconds remaining on the clock. The reason I just say a couple of seconds remaining is because you never want to risk having it be like, 3, 2, 1. And then Gogoroth like moves at half an inch to the right or something and your teammate misses and then the whole thing's just done. It's better to just take his gaze with like 2 seconds remaining or whatever. You lose a couple seconds on damage, sure, but you keep the challenge intact, and in the end, that's really all that matters. Now, speaking on staying in the pools, I think in terms of challenge mode, it's a terrible idea for the gaze holder or the person that just held the gaze to stay down there at any given time. There's a couple of reasons for it. One, normally, when you're in there, Gogroff is not shooting you with Axion darts. If you're the current gaze holder and you're going in there to switch the buff, he is shooting you with Axion darts, so you can easily die between Golgoroth shooting you with Axion darts, him being able to slam you if you're in a pool that's near Golgoroth, he does slam if you have the gaze on him and you're in the pool, by the way. And then obviously there's a bunch of Thrall, a Phalanx, uh, a Hive Knight, a bunch of things that can go wrong and you can just die and throw the entire thing out of whack. So I feel like once you've lost your gaze and your teammate's taken it, just get out of the pool, get into the next position, start shooting the next orb and get ready to switch the gaze once again. Additionally, one more stupid thing that can happen if you go down there for too long is you might get the unstable buff and if you get the unstable buff that means you're not going to do damage because obviously you're not going to be in Golgoroth's face trying to take that buff down while setting up for the entire you know carousel of switching the gaze so you're just going to be losing out on damage on that as well so you should just go in there when you're low timer switch gaze immediately get out and hope that he hasn't done his unstable debuff thing and it landed on you so your teammates can keep the damage and keep everything rolling now, how you handle yourself in the pools for DPS is going to tie into what subclasses you should use and what elements and stuff like that. And the answer is just going to be flat out solar. Solar is going to be the answer. It is by far the easiest to utilize for both survivability and bonus damage. On solar, you obviously have healing grenades, which will come in huge because unless you're running like five different wells, you're not going to have enough healing going on because you're going to use maybe, let's say, two well radiance on average in the pools, but there's six bubbles. So... Some extra healing will definitely be helpful and maybe even needed depending on how low your fire team is in the level department. So healing nades on hunters and titans is uh, pretty goaded. And then for warlocks, I would normally recommend healing. But fusion nades with Starfire are bangers here. And I'll get to that in a second on why. So wrapping a little backwards, we're going to start with hunter. Hunters on solar here. The reason is Caliban's hand. Why? Because Caliban's hand makes one thing blow up and then makes 50 other things around it blow up. And you can use the proximity knife to throw the knife on the ground near you guys. You don't have to waste time trying to aim for an enemy at a far away distance to get this going. You put the knife down on the floor, you have melee willmaker equipped on your armor, and then anything that passes by goes boom, dies, makes a chain reaction, and kills everything else, and then makes you a solar well. Then the solar well will come to you because you should be wearing seeking wells on your armor as well. If you have that on, the well will come to you, and then you'll be doing much more damage with solar weapons going forward. Now, the same thing can be said with Titans. They have Bonk Hammer, Unlimited Hammers. As long as you don't throw your hammer into Uganda, you will make continuous solar wells and sunspots in your DPS bubble as well. If you just throw a hammer on the ground on a Thrall, so everything that comes to you will die. You'll make a solar well, and you'll be protected in terms of healing. You can also rock a Phoenix Cradle, I believe, so it'll give everybody a sunspot to be chilling in. That works too. And then... For Warlocks, you can do the same thing. Uh, you have Melee Wallmaker for your Celestial Fire, and then you have Elemental Ordnance for your Grenade, because Fusion Nades with Starfire are stupid in both the damage department, and they can still make a Solar Well. Whether you throw it at a Thrall, on the ground, at a Phalanx, at the boss, the explosion will more than likely make you a Solar Well, which again would go to you for more bonus damage. So on top of Seeking Wells, Elemental uh, Ordnance for Grenades, and then Melee Wallmaker 
for everyone's melees, you want to stack Font of Might. You put Font of Might on, and then your damage goes through the roof because you will be using, you guessed it, a solar heavy weapon. Now, obviously, Cataclysmic is like the number one by a large margin. So if you have one, particularly with bait and switch, absolutely use it. It shreds. And then if you don't, you could always sub it out for a different solar weapon. Hell, even a sleeper simulate will be just fine. As long as you're taking advantage of the solar buff going on in the damage phase. It's extremely easy. You'll be seeing on screen how I'm making solar wells left and right. And on top of that, all you really need is somebody using Divinity. You rock Divinity to make the crit much bigger. Super easy to hit. Get a debuff, more damage. I don't think I need to go into why or how Div is just incredibly stupid. That's pretty much it that you need for the damage phase. Last tip I have to end the video is a, a tip for dummies. Let, let's just call it a tip for dummies. So, when you're going to be using Well of Radiance, you're going to want to do two things. One, don't pop it on the first damage pool. Why? Because there will be no enemies around you for this phase whatsoever. You're just going to be standing there shooting Golgoroth the entire time. The reason you don't want to do this, you're thinking, oh, well, I'm going to have extra damage. What do you mean? Well, you're going to have five other pools to go to, and you're going to have enemies in those pools coming at you. So, logically, you want to have that Well Radiance up in as many pools as possible when you actually have enemies up, therefore trying to, you know, survive the encounter and not cause a death. So what I would recommend is, first pool, pop, like, Empowering Rift or something along those lines, do damage to Golgoroth, and then going to pool two, three, four, five. You want to be like, all right, I'll pop well here, I'll pop well on pool 3, pool 4, etc. That way, you're getting the bonus damage, but you're also protecting your life. The other thing I wanted to mention, and this is with Well Again, is when you're popping these wells, make sure you pop them in the damage pool or on top of it or really, really close to it. Because if you don't, it kind of overlaps and it might give the, the idea to the gaze holders to think, oh, okay, the well is right here. I'm going to go stand in it. And then they're standing in the well, but not in the damage pool. And then they'll say, hey, uh, gaze holder, go ahead and take the gaze. And then it'll say, oh, challenge failed. And your teammates are going to be like, what, what the hell just went wrong? The game broke. F you, Bungie. Well, in reality, it's going to be your gaze holder was not in the pool because the things were not overlapped properly. They just assumed they were. So to avoid this, just pop your well over the damage pool just to be safe. And then you shouldn't have a problem. That's all I got. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, the challenge is not very creative in my opinion. It is probably the easiest one also for Master King's Fall. I don't know. We'll see about Daughters. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. But uh, hopefully this helps you guys get the challenge done, one and done. And then get the hell out of there. Go get your uh, hard weapon if you still need it. And go back to normal where the real loot is. Because we have Adepts and Master and Crafted and Normal for some reason. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. That's up the channel. Stream daily on Twitch. Link in the description. Hashtag ad. I'm out. Catch you in the next video. Goodbye.